Hello and welcome to the episode 18 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we're focusing on the events of the 18th of January, with concerts and TV interviews about the underground movement, and we talk a bit about roadies. On the 18th of January 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed for their fourth of 31 nights at the Aintree Institute in Liverpool. The night earned the lads £8.10, shillings, about £190 in 2020 money. In 1963, the Beatles had an engagement at the Floral Hall Ballroom in Morecambe. Neil Aspinall, road manager of the band, was unwell, and so Les Hurst, ready for Jerry and the Pacemakers, helped the band. Since today's episode is lean on events, I want to take some time to talk about roadies. This is not just to give you a hint about what life on the road was back in the Beatles' days, or even today, but also to pay homage to those invisible men and women who make live music happen, at a time in which the coronavirus has put them out of a job, often without any safety net. Simply put, a roadie is anyone who helps getting together a live performance. They are tour managers, stage managers, sound engineers, lightning techs and instrument techs. They might literally build the stage the performance is taking place on, or simply, quote-unquote, make sure that everything goes as well as it can. Even as a simple musician with only a few small festivals under my belt, I can tell you that it is great to have someone who helps you move your instruments and set them up, and to help you just focusing on the performance, without wondering whether the audience is getting a good sound, if someone is stealing your stuff from the van, and the like. But before this tangent becomes a bloated section in which I ramble on about various music business topics, that's content for another podcast or video series, let's go back to the Beatles. Famously, at least for those who have spent some time reading about the band, the Fab Four had two main roadies throughout their career, Neil Aspinall and Mole Evans. Neil Aspinall was born in Preston, Wales, on the 13th of October 1941, after his mother was relocated from the family home in Liverpool because of the German air raids on the city. The Aspinalls returned to Liverpool in 1942. Neil attended the Liverpool Institute as a teenager, being in the same English and art classes as Paul McCartney, and soon getting to know George Harrison too, thanks to the burgeoning smoking habit of the two. By 1958-1959, he had come to know John Lennon too. After school, he started his career as a trainee accountant for a local company, renting a room in Mona Best's house. This, naturally, led Aspinall to become a close friend with Pete Best, who was the Beatles' drummer at the time. And so, by February 1961, after having a private band became a necessity for the band, Best asked Aspinall to become road manager for the Beatles, earning five shillings about £5.60 in 2020 money, for each concert. Eventually, Aspinall realized that this side job was bringing him more money than his proper accountant job, and he decided to become the Beatles' permanent road manager. By 1963, the pressure on the band and the constant gigging was too much for Aspinall to face alone, and so Mal Evans was added to the score. With Evans acting as a bodyguard and a man of muscle, Aspinall gradually became a personal manager for the lads, arranging appointments, buying them things, and so on. This, in turn, caused the Beatles to turn to Aspinall when they needed the manager for their newly established Apple Corps in 1968. We will talk about Apple and Aspinall's part in that story further down the line. For the moment, I'll only add that Neil Aspinall died of lung cancer in 2008. I can't comment on whether his smoking habit had anything to do with it, but since this podcast is available to very young kids, too, 
I'd invite you all to look into the health-related issues that smoking can bring onto you, often years down the line. Mal Evans was born on the 27th of May 1935 in Liverpool. Evans was working as a telephone engineer for the post office when he first came across the Beatles, during a lunchtime concert of the band at the Cavern Club sometime in 1962. He and George Harrison became friends, and it was George who suggested to the Cavern's owner Ray McFall to hire Evans as a doorman slash bouncer. Evans got the job, despite his thick glasses, thanks to his massive 6 feet 6 inches frame, about 197 centimeters. His good natured characters earned him the nicknames of Gentle Giant and Big Mal. Evans was permanently hired as a roadie and bodyguard of the Beatles on the 11th of August 1963. He was one of the people active during the first fight we covered in the 16th episode of What a Fab Day, during the Beatles' debut on the stage of the Olympia Theatre in Paris, France. Thanks to his telephone engineer experience, he was also very useful to test and fix the equipment. He also eventually became a personal manager for the band, striking a close friendship with Paul McCartney in particular, to the extent that the two lived together at some point, at 7 Cavendish Avenue in London, when Paul needed a housekeeper in 1967. Again, we'll talk about Evan's role in the life of the band in later episodes. Big Mal was shot to death by the LAPD on the 5th of January 1976, when, confused by alcohol and Valium, he showed up with a toy rifle when the police broke into his home. After a call for help, placed by his then girlfriend Fran Hughes. On the 18th of January 1964, the Beatles performed again at the Olympia Theatre in Paris, France, for their ongoing three weeks' residency at the venue. Finally, three years later, in 1967, Paul McCartney was interviewed by Joe Durden Smith at the central London offices of Granada Television for a slot in the 29 minutes scene special broadcast. The interview focused on the underground or counterculture movement, making a case for its inclusion in a general cultural discourse. The show was aired exclusively in the north of England on the 7th of March between 10.25 and 10.55 pm. Paul's interview was included in the show to balance out scenes from Pink Floyd performing at the UFO Club, interviews with the editorial board of the famous underground magazine International Times, and scenes from various happenings. The goal was to give credibility to a movement that seemed odd, at best, even to some Londoners, in a show meant for the socially more conservative North. In the interview, Paul explained that the underground was really about personal freedom, and that people should have approached it without preconceived notions. He maintained that the aims of the movement were really to the benefit of all mankind. In his words, the underground movement was not strange, it's just new, it's not weird, it's just what's going on around. This concludes today's episode of What A Fab Day. Please check www.simonmas.com support to find ways to support this and my other music-related projects. Remember that even just having a look at my series and sharing the material on your social media can help me considerably, without costing you any money. In the episode description, you will also find a link for a page including all the sources I have used to write this podcast, in case you felt like delving into the material yourself. They're all Amazon affiliate links, so your shopping can support my effort, too. You will also find a YouTube link to the 1967 Granada TV interview by Paul. While you listen, scroll down to the comment section, to get acquainted with some Paul is Dead conspiracy theorists. 
we will talk about that nonsense too when the stars are right. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.